How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the seventh episode of Subscriber Showdown, the series where you guys send in your cards for me to talk about, review, give you my opinions on, and tell you what should do some in the future. And then it's up to you guys to decide which card's your favourite by voting on the poll on this side of the screen. The winner of that poll by the next episode wins one of these Subscriber Showdown winner stickers for their windows, either on their cards or wherever they want to put them. And last episode's winner with 43% of the vote was Connor with his Ford Focus ST3. Massive congratulations to Connor. I'll be reaching out shortly to send off your your prize. If you want to enter this series, the link is down below. And just a tip from me, if you're entering, make sure you send me as many pictures and videos as possible because sometimes people send in like three pictures and how am I supposed to make a full section about your car if I have like three or five pictures? I need like a good minimum 10, if not like 20, 30, and that'll give it like a really good chance of being on the show. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. And without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> First up, we have Brad's BMW M2 from 2017, which when he bought only had 26,000 miles on the clock and he's put a further 2,000 on since owning. It's a six speed manual and he really likes the OEM look of the car, so hasn't done too many mods to it. But one thing that he did want to do was put on the LCI LED lights, which came in the later models, Fortunately for him, BMW actually replaced his lights under warranty, so very lucky there. But despite not having loads of mods to it, it does have a bunch of M Performance parts on it. That includes an M Performance exhaust with quad carbon tips, a carbon boot lid spoiler, a carbon rear diffuser, black kidney radiator grille, carbon side skirt fins, carbon mirrors, Alcantara steering wheel with F1 style gear shift indicator, which looks really, really cool, and then tinted rear windows. As I mentioned, he wanted to keep that OEM style to the car, so he wants to do some M Performance metal plating on the stock pedals. He wants to replace the current MP carbon mirrors with the curved wing mirrors from the M2 competition. Also considering having a carbon front splitter to match the rear diffuser. He doesn't want anything over the top but something that just looks a little bit nicer. And he's considering chip tuning the ECU with the race chip GTS black or the AC Schnitzer ECU upgrade. Apparently both of them will get power up from 365 brake horsepower to over 400 brake horsepower which is nuts. That said apparently the M2 doesn't have a very good gearbox when it comes to adding more power on so more research required. He mentioned the car was supposed to be his daily driver, but as he can currently walk to work, he's not really using it that much, so he's only put 2,000 miles on it, as I mentioned. He loves driving it, thinks it handles amazing, thinks it drives amazing. His girlfriend doesn't like how stiff the ride is, but what can you do about that? And apparently his previous car was an Astra SRI Turbo from 2017, so this is a massive jump up going from that to an M2, so massively fair play to you there, Brad. What I use this car, I do agree. I think OEM looks super good on these M2s, and I also think they're good news in terms of the longer term or the future, as you say, being one of the last analog sports cars of this kind of class. I would agree with the carbon points you've mentioned. A nice front splitter would be quite nice. Nice. Obviously, be careful with going for one of those because it, they roll out on bumps and get cracked and they are a bit of a pain in that sense. If you're really interested in remaining OEM, I would consider maybe looking at some of the different coloured interiors that you can buy for the M2. I do like how murdered out the car looks on the outside, being all black with the black tinted windows and then the carbon features here and there. But that interior... I think it's a little bit boring in BMWs, if I'm perfectly honest. I don't really like their interiors that much. I love the steering wheel. I think that's really cool. I'd maybe consider looking for some Alcantara seats. That could be quite nice. Or just changing the color of the interior completely to something that just contrast that exterior of the car. I do however really like the carbon on that interior, that does look very nice. Thank you very much to Brad for entering, let's go on to the next one. Next up we have a car after my own heart, it is Adam's Skoda Octavia from 2002, but more importantly it's the 4x4 Turbo Edition. Now these are really rare Octavias to find and Adam was lucky enough to find one in half decent condition with not too much rust on it and hadn't been battered and bruised because these cars are generally considered to be like cheap rally cars that so you can thrash around and wreck. Adam says that as he comes from Eastern Europe, he spent a lot of time watching the World Rally Championship and supporting the Skodas alongside the Impressors and the Evos. So when this car came up, Adam knew he had to have it and persuaded his parents to allow him to put the car on their driveway on a patch of grass. The previous owner also put a Brembo brake kit on the car that is worth pretty much as much as the car, so that was a key benefit there. But here's the saddest part of this whole story. In the entire time that Adam has owned the car, he's been unable to insure it simply because of how rare the car is and how expensive they are to ensure. Which means that in over a year of owning this car, he's only driven it about a mile. Now, while that is very sad, he has been doing a lot of upgrades to it, so let's talk through those. So the previous owner swapped the standard block for a different 1.8T that has 225 brake horsepower. He's got the VRS body kit on it, 10 millimeter spacers so that the rims fit over the brakes, front and rear h &R anti-roll bar and poly bushes. It's got a front mount, a blow-off valve, a cold air intake, 
KWV1 coilovers, sway bar upgrades and poly bushes, custom headlights that have a projector conversion and RGB double demon eye installs, say at V5 seats front and rear, painted grill, all of the interior pretty much is painted to be blacked out. And then he's also got a Rolls Royce style roof liner with the sort of starlight or whatever you want to call it. A stitch steering wheel, a DIY shifter boot, VRS cluster swap, and he's currently in the process of re-upholstering the door cards and installing mood lighting as well. And in the future, he would like to repaint the car so that it looks up to scratch and then also put a WRC wing on it. Now, as I'm sure many of you are aware, my first car was a Skoda Fabia Estate, so I'm a big fan of Skoda as a brand. And this car does look really good and the mods you've done to it so far are really nice. I assume it would probably handle quite well given the fact that it's got those H&R anti-roll bars as well as those nice brakes and basically all that good stuff. In terms of future modifications that I think you should do to this car, one of them in particular would be some different alloys. I think the alloys on there are nice, don't get me wrong, but I think some lightweight bronze alloys would go really well with that blue exterior. As an overall though, I'm actually really impressed by this build. I think it looks really nice so far and the re-upholstering of the interior will be quite nice. I'd maybe consider getting some slightly more bolster buckets in there but that's about it i like the stuff that you're going for it's not over the top it's about right in my opinion and i definitely appreciate the vision that you've got going for this massive thank you to adam for entering also he said that i reignited his love for doing youtube videos so i appreciate that i just like making them myself so i'm glad that you like making them too next up we have a very interesting one from jacob it is this e39 525i drift car he bought the car back in january 2018 when he was just 16 years old for 2300 pounds he lives in sweden so his dad had to drive the car home as you can't drive in Sweden until you're 18 years old. And originally the car was supposed to be his first car for when he started driving. But that plan very quickly changed. Him and his dad went to a couple of drift shows and got really, really into it. So they thought, how about we buy another car which will turn into a drift car? That plan again quickly changed. They thought, well, this E39 is perfect for boosting. We can put a turbocharger on it and it can be a mixture of being a drift car as well as a daily driver. But then that plan changed all over again. And instead they thought, forget all that. Let's just keep this as a track only car boost the absolute life out of it to get 450 brake horsepower on a car that from factory only produced 200 brake horsepower. He mentioned that he's aware the car is actually very heavy, but anything with a welded diff and a lot of power is driftable. What I think is amazing as well is that despite being young, he has paid for all of this himself. His dad has helped him to buy stuff up front, but where he's done that, he's paid him back. I think that's really quite admirable to have this passion project and putting your time and money and effort into it. So let's go through the mods on it so far. It's got a Garrett turbo, a custom exhaust that he welded himself, a short throw shifter, Sparco seats, a Momo Model 08 steering wheel, a Hydro e-brake, 1300cc injectors and a big fuel pump running E85, bumper deletes front and rear, stripped all the interior passenger seats, 35mm spacers on the front and 20 on the rear, a welded diff, coilovers, a strut brace on the front, max ECU, a half cage, camber plates and some random aftermarket wheels from the previous owner. In the future he wants a bigger turbo for more boost and power, a steering angle kit, a new bonnet and doors to reduce weight, maybe go for a wide body, build a new turbo manifold and then make the half cage into a full cage. It's got to be said, it sounds like an absolute beast when it's driving. There's not really much that I can say to make this a better project. You have a drift car, it does drifting, what more do you want? I definitely agree with the weight reduction points, that definitely makes sense. Sounds like you're very capable at doing these mods, so I think maybe the wide body kit would be an interesting challenge because you're going from doing some of the like cage stuff and interior stuff to suddenly doing some exterior stuff where you're bolting stuff onto the car and widening things, etc. And however much I'd love to say that you should do some other madness to it, the car is mad enough as it is, so if I had your car, I'd be looking at getting it to exactly where I wanted it in terms of running, so making sure that it was running nice and well, making sure that it was the right shape, so maybe wide bodying it, etc. And then once I'd had all that sorted, I'd probably look to put some nice decals or whatever on it. I'm talking go faster stripes, I'm talking flames, I'm talking both at the same time. Nah, I'm joking, you know what I mean. I would put some nice stickers on there, make it look exactly how I want it to be, maybe repaint it, whatever. Basically, make it look like it's mine. By the way, massive fan of the car. I think it's super cool what you've done there, and I hope to see it out on track in the future. Next up we have Jay's 2018 Ford Focus RS Mark III. He bought the car around about a year ago, but also he is a Ford technician, so he has a lot of experience working on cars like this one. With that in mind, he decided to stage two the car, which means it is putting on 404 brake horsepower to the front wheels, as well as 420 pound feet of torque. And the reason why I say that is because the car has to be dynoed in front wheel drive mode. He uses the car as a daily, which he says is a little bit rough, 
but he also tracks the car once every little while and that's when it really comes into its own. In terms of the mods then, it's got an AirTech induction kit, AirTech intercooler and boost pipes, a DCAT downpipe, Mountune recirc valve, Revo stage two remap, Mountune short shifter, h &R lowering springs and spacers, and then Judd Matt Bronze 19 inch wheel. And yes, he mentions the only real bad point of the car is the fact that it rides really rough. Now, first off in terms of that exterior, I really love how the alloys look on the car. Definitely a big fan. The color is also great too. And I also really like your personalized number plate. I think that's quite nice as well. Particularly with the slight smoking on it too. It just really fits the feel of the car. If I was in your shoes, I would look to maybe fill the outside with some of the nice carbon parts that come for it. There's a whole bunch of carbon bits that you can stick onto this car and they look really, really nice. And they'll also help with the weight reduction too. They can, however, be quite expensive. So it depends on budget. But I think with that gray exterior, the carbon would just look so good on it. In terms of taking the car to track days, I'd maybe consider getting some buckets in there or whatever in the front because I think they'd be quite helpful. I may be wrong, but I feel like the RS doesn't have that great bolstering on it. So I'd be slightly worried that I'd be moving around too much going around corners. But at the same time, that would kind of take away from it being a daily. So maybe not worth it. But either way, a very nice focus to have on the channel. It looks unreal. Really cool to see that you're tracking it as well. And thank you very much for entering. Finally, in this video, we have Mazin's E92 330i M Sport. It's a 2010 model, which he bought in September 2019 for £8,000. Before we probably get into this car, let me just say, I really like the E92. It's one of my favorite of the three series. In fact, I prefer it to all of the three series since. Now, Mazin is hugely blessed to be able to own this car at 21 years old and insure it despite living in Northwest London. He's quite local to me and I know that insurance in this area is not perfect. But the mods in it so far include a red start stop button, a wrapped dash panel in carbon fiber, which I massively respect, it's my favorite thing to do, tinted windows, black trim, 335i dual exhaust tips and diffuser, a muffler delete so it's straight piped, black side indicators, tinted headlights, carbon fiber front canards, chrome red paddle shifters, a rear spoiler lip, and then the M badge. In the future, he's got a bunch of really crazy mods he wants to do to it, including a chrome green vinyl wrap, full interior trim wrap, Recaro bucket seats, custom Alcantara steering wheel, quad exhaust tips, M4 style front and rear bumpers, air suspension, an M2 style bonnet, a wide body kit, BBS brush plate alloy wheels, a starlit roof like the Rolls Royce ones we saw earlier, and custom headlights. Now that is a very comprehensive list of mods that you'd like to do to the car really would change the car completely from how it looks today. The one thing that I would say is sad about that collection of mods is I absolutely love the alloys you already have on the car, the OEM ones that come with it. They may well be my favorite OEM alloys from any manufacturer ever, at least not including like supercars and that kind of stuff. In terms of the mods you've done so far, it definitely all makes sense. I like where you're going with it. It's all quite simple stuff that also makes a big difference in terms of how it really looks. One thing that I'm never normally a fan of, but actually do quite like on your car is the M badge. If if I had one of these, I'd definitely remove the M badges, but your black one actually does look quite nice on the car and it doesn't really contrast too much. So I think it looks quite good. I've always wanted to see what those OEM alloys would look like if they were black. So I'd maybe consider getting those anodized black for a bit just to see what they look like. Your steering wheel definitely has space to be carbon fiber wrapped as well. So I'd probably go for that too. I know that I'm more performance focused than I am pretty focused, but I would potentially consider getting a good set of coilovers on there so that the car rides a lot better or drives faster around corners, basically. And overall, yeah, I really like your car. One thing that I didn't mention that I think is really nice is that red leather interior. I, If I was going to get one of these cars, I'd get an E93, so I'd get the convertible, and I'd 100% get it with that red leather interior. I think that looks really, really cool. Thank you very much, Amazon, for entering. Also, a huge thank you because you sent me 51 pictures and videos, and that's exactly the kind of entry I want to see. That kind of entry means that I have plenty of choice of stuff, and it means I can really have a look into your car more thoroughly. So that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to vote up here for your favorites. If you'd like to enter, link in the description. It will explain everything. Massive thank you to the patrons, as always. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Listen.